Welcome back to ODT's Interpret Software video series. In previous videos, we have explored how to easily upload FastQ files into the software, use them to create a batch for data analysis, and seen how to navigate around your analysis batch results and the QC data. In this video, we are going to look at the Variance Results page. I'm going to open up the View Batches page and then filter this to view all the batches that will run using the CLL plus CNV panel. Now we can just click on the batch we want to open to view the results. To look in detail at the variance, you can quickly jump to a single sample results by clicking on the results view icon for the type of aberration you wish to view, for example, SMVs, CNVs, or translocations. You can also select multiple samples to view simultaneously by checking the All Samples box, or you can select individual samples by checking the boxes on each samples row in the table. Once selected, you can then choose which aberration type you want to view by clicking the relevant button. The Variance Results screen identifies the type of aberration being viewed, gives the sample ID, and also has buttons to toggle between the different aberration types as well as return to the batch overview page. The number of variants that have passed the analysis pipeline filters are displayed in the red box on the left hand side. This top section panel shows the protocol filter that has been applied to the analysis and the number of variants that have passed the protocol filters are displayed in the green box on the right hand side. The protocol filter box can be hidden to free up space in the display. The table below shows all the variants that remain after the protocol filters have been applied. In this case, the variants found in both these samples. Here you can see that 64 variants have passed the analysis pipeline filter. And then after the analysis protocol filter is applied, there are 46 variants left. As with other tables in the software, the user can customize what is displayed in the table using the column selector button. The options available will depend on the type of aberration being viewed and a full list of these is given in the user guide. The table displays each variant found in the sample on a separate row and the user can set the number displayed on each page. There is also an action menu which can be used to generate a report of the variants, add the variants to a list, create dynamic filters to focus the list to variants of interest, and manage the annotation tracks that are shown in the IGV section of the display. Users can add or remove data tracks to the IGV view. This can be from publicly available sources or from proprietary internal or subscription based sources. Rows in the variant table can be sorted using the column header. So for example, we can sort the variants by decreasing allele frequency. Right clicking on a row will generate a pop-up menu with a range of options. Here you can add the variant to a list and this can be used to set up filtering options. You can set the preferred transcript. By default this will be the largest canonical transcript for the gene. Users can classify variants in two ways. Firstly, either by directly assigning one of the default classifiers available in the software or alternatively, a classification can be assigned by following guidelines described by the ACMG. The software also provides variant links, so that users can link out to external sources of documentation. Several links are provided, but additional resources can be added in the admin control section. 
The bottom part of the screen shows an embedded light version of IGV Viewer. Clicking on one of the variants in the table will launch the variant in IGV. In this display, you can see a track for the reference genome, which is shown as colored bars or colored letters, depending on the zoom level, and the alignment track for the sample, which shows the depths of coverage and the individual sequencing reads. Within the IGV window, there are several options for modifying the data being displayed. By default, the sequence viewer is centered upon the selected variant but users can drag the display upstream and downstream of the variant position. You can also select to view individual chromosomes or view the whole genome data. You can enter specific genomic coordinates using the start stop position field, or you can enter a gene name. By default, the IGV alignment read visibility threshold is set to 30 KB so you need to zoom in below this size to see the reads being displayed. This can be done by using the magnification slider at the top of the window. The software can also display multi-locus positions. In the depth of coverage track, the reads are displayed at each locus as a grey bar chart. If a nucleotide differs from the reference genome by greater than 20%, then IGV will colour the bar in proportion to the recount of each base. Users can change the default value by clicking on the settings icon for the alignment track and select set minimum allele frequency. In this example we have 50% of reads with the alternate allele. Several other properties of the alignment track can also be changed via the settings icon. For the alignment track individual reads, those that match the reference genome are coloured grey. Reads that do not match the reference genome are flagged using the IGV default colour coding. Insertions and deletions within the reads relative to the reference are marked by a purple vertical line and a black dash respectively. The IGV display can be switched to a second monitor if one is available by clicking on the open IGV in a separate window icon. If you selected to open the data for multiple samples, then you will be able to see the variants from all those samples displayed in the variants table. But you can also choose to view the alignment track for multiple samples by selecting it from the sample drop down list. This provides a convenient way to compare the variant in different samples. If you want to switch to looking at other aberration types in the selected samples, all you need to do is click on the relevant button. You will only be shown those aberration types that the chosen panel has been designed to target. Here we can switch to look at the CMV and LOH aberrations or translocations. The variance table now displays all the calls found in the target regions. You can choose to look at just the LOH or CNV accordingly. Clicking on a call in a table will show the region in the tracks below. You will also find additional aberration type specific annotation tracks which can aid in the interpretation of the results. As with the page displaying SNV and Indel calls, a right click on the row in the table will bring up an options menu. Again you can see we can add the call to a short list or you can set a classification to the call. For users who are familiar with OGT Cytosure microarray analysis software there is an option to load CMV data directly into Cytosure Interpret to display the data in a familiar software package. 
There is also a links option which displays the links out to various online resources. And these links, along with the annotation tracks, can be customised by the user. That's all we're going to cover in this video, but please refer to the user guide for more information or if you have any questions regarding the Interpret software or any of OGT's NGS products, please contact support at OGT.com.